Hello and welcome back to my channel, Supercoach Challenges. My name's Jacob and we're going through the forward line of the uh, mid-priced team uh, of 400k and less. So as we said in the last video, uh, the rules have changed uh, because we're trying to make it a bit more of a competitive game. So what we're doing is we're coming to... We're starting with no premiums over 400k. So everyone has to be below 400k and no trades can be made until after the third round where price rises begin. And we can only trade one premium uh, per week into the team. Anything That's anything above 400k until the buyers from which we can just go ham on whatever we want because we want to try and make a team that's somewhat competitive over the season not just going to be you know 40 50 000 rank maybe we can get a bit closer because you know by around six there'll be positional changes um uh, and we'll be able to kind of figure out who might be some big primos that are not in other teams that we might be able to get in that are going to do better than the heavily picked players that have already been picked and we'll also be able to see some primos who are going really well who've got the role and who are moving the way we need them to and this could be it won't ever be a strategy that's used but it's something different it's a different team to what we're seeing with everyone else doing and it's just a different idea and it's a bit of fun um so as i've said before if you want to Follow along, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and um, we'll be posting every week, just checking out the team, what our moves will be, having a review of the scores. And, you know, if one of these mid prices is failing, um, we're going to be able to upgrade them straight away because we're going to have quite a bit of money uh, put away to be able to do so. As I said, for round three, we are allowed to trade between mid prices. We just can't trade up above 400k players so um anyway here we go so four forwards um this is actually normally a pretty hard area to choose but i think it's not too bad like premiums have been set and the good thing about this is we might be able to get a kind of look at some other forwards instead now i think dunkley's going to be probably the first player we try to get in. I think he's going to go crazy this year, probably 120 to 130, and we're going to want him in as soon as possible, which will probably be around for three, because I think that, like, Laird, Oliver, they could maybe pull off a little bit. Some other players could have some bad weeks. I think Dunkley has shown that if he gets me time, he can just go absolutely hand, and we're going to try and get him in as soon as possible to this team. So... um. In saying that, let's move on with the selection for the team so far. So uh, this is quite a uh, uh, a player that wouldn't be normally picked in a normal team, but for this team, he's got the role. It looks like I think he played, you know, barely any time. I think like fifty percent, fifty eight percent in a losing team, and he still scored a ninety on the weekend on a team that was getting absolutely smashed. Um, if he can just save bit for those first six, seven rounds, as soon as he gets injured, he goes out. And that's probably a good thing about this team. You know, a guy like Siebel, as soon as he's injured, he goes out, we bring in that premium. Uh, it's probably a bit of flexibility that maybe other teams don't really have, but this team is going to have. And hopefully, you know, if all of our mid prices are overperforming, we're just going to have more and more money building up and we're going to be able to make those trades as we need to. All right, so next is Nathan Fife. Now, he's in a large amount of teams. Why is this not showing? Oh, because it's Nat. Uh, Nat Fife, uh, we all know how good this guy is, um, and apparently he's looked extremely good in preseason. I didn't watch much of the actual practice game. I did watch him play against the Crows because I go for the Crows, and he played very well. Um he kicked a few goals, and they have a very easy start, the Dockers. Um, and it's going to be good to be able to watch that and watch Fire Because I don't know if I have the guts to start him in my normal classic team, but in this team, uh, we can we can 
take a stab at him and see how he goes. And I think that if Fife can just keep two or three goals a week, he's going to average 80 and 90 and 42% of the competition has him anyway. So even if he goes badly, we're probably not losing a huge amount of points. Um, now next, this position is open to two players. So we've got Tanner Bruin or Flanders. So this is actually probably mid six, uh, M6. Now, Bruin got 77% time on ground and he got 48% CBAs in the practice match. Now, obviously it's a practice match, you can't take too much. The Geelong probably not going to make Dangerfield and Guthrie play a full game in the mids. It's not really something they'd be looking at. But in saying that, if he gets named, he is going to be playing in the midfield for them. And if he does that, he can score 80 to 90. He scored 100 off of 77% time on ground. If that gets to 80%, 80, well, 90, 80 to 90%, that could be 110, 120. So um, we're going to have Anna Bruin here for now. But uh, I mean, the other option is Flanders. Uh, he had 87% time of ground, which means that Gold Coast do want to play him. They were getting smashed by GWS, though, and they did put Anderson and others in Cottonwood, which is why I'm not so hot on him. I do have him in my normal classic team, but that's just because of price, at the, which in this team isn't as much of an issue. Um, so at the moment, we're going to start Bruin. Uh, um, but if Landers gets picked, one of these next three could go out. I would probably say it's this next guy. So the next guy is Kasai Pickett. So Kasai Pickett surprisingly had 48. Well, not necessarily surprisingly. He has played in the midfield over the past years for uh, Melbourne. Uh, but he had 48% CBAs and was fourth or fifth most um, from their midfield. If you And if you don't take out if you take out Gorn and Grundy, I think he was fourth behind Oliver, Petrarca, and I don't think Viney played, so it must have been like, no, it must have been third most. So, uh, um, I mean, that bodes well for him to get more of a midfield role this year. And when you've got Gorn and Grundy tapping down to you, you'd hope he'd be able to get some nice clearances from the midfield. So, um, I think it's going to be the one that starts in here. He's at a higher 360s price, so if he doesn't do well, he's probably one we drop. But if he can get 80 to 90, that's all we need. And I think first half of the year might be a little bit hard because they do have a little bit of a hard start. Uh, I do know, I think, it's supposed to open up round four, four-ish. Um, so if he can just get some 80s to 90s through there till round four, we can hopefully have him go bang, bang, bang over the next few after that. Um, but if Flanders does get selected, it's going to be hard not to pick him over Pickett or at least try and fit him in somehow. It actually could be that the, the D, uh, F8, sorry, that goes out. Uh, the next guy, so Jason Horn Francis. Uh, I think it's pretty... Uh, common knowledge that he's going to be playing a lot of midfield time for Port and they need a big body like him. Um, I don't think they can continue to sort of try, uh, well, put all the pressure on Boak to be playing in there. I think Boak's been kind of going to get more of that forward line role um, and he's going to swap through there when a when guy like Horn Francis rests. Um, and I think Horn Francis is going to be that main mid, midfield uh, with... Ollie Wines and Connor Rosie with Butters probably swapping with Rosie and a few others swapping through there. I mean, Carl Amon's gone now. He would have taken, well, he was a wing role, but he would have got quite a bit of time in the middle as well, um, taking up a lot of that outside stuff. And I think Horn Francis is the, along with Power Pepper, is going to be one of those guys in and under getting those contested possessions and probably outscoring, well, He'll be outscoring most rookies that are going to have to be played here. Uh, there's going to be a lot of teams that are running Toby McLean um, and among other players here, uh, maybe even Sheasel, stuff like that, and he's going to outscore them pretty easily. Um, and the last one. Uh, so, I mean, this is probably more just a guess on the guy. 
But I think that Darcy Fogarty could be in for a big year. Uh, if you watch the Coast play, if this guy gets a mark inside 50, it's pretty much a guaranteed goal. He doesn't miss much. Now, he did mu miss quite a bit on the weekend, but he was still able to get 118, and he probably didn't get that much time on ground once they started building West Coast. And he has been on the radio saying it's time for these younger like players like him, the younger players to step up and take the reins from guys like Tex. And I think he's going to be the big guy in there. He's getting games over uh, guys like um, Phil Thorpe. Um, he'd be ahead of Himmelberg quite easily. And I think that he's going to start to become the main man. The thing is, he isn't going to get that number one defender either. Uh, that's going to be Tex. And if it, his game on the weekend's anything to go by, he got 90 disposals. He'll hopefully push up the field a bit more, connect a bit more, take some contests and marks. He's got, he's hopefully built some more muscle on top of what he already had. And with this straight kick, I think we can get a lot of goals out of him and some high, high scoring. And the Crows have a quite tasty fixture to start the year with um, four or five of the first seven at home, um, something like that, or four of the first five. And I think that's going to just bode well for Fogarty as well. Um, but as I said, these picks, you know, the, I think that this is probably the position the forward line is going to be the hardest one. I think that Zeebel, Fife, Horn Francis are going to be fine. Uh, Broon, Pickett, Broon, if he plays, is going to be fine. But Pickett and Fogarty are probably the interesting ones. And as we're going to probably aim for Dunkley after that third round pretty quickly, I think we should be all right running this and running this forward line. And we are going to have guys on the bench to be able to, you know, swap in, I think, because the next guy is Liam Henry. Now, Liam Henry is quite an attractive price. And if you look at his scores, he hasn't done much the previous years, but he is locked into a ring wing role and it is a contract year for him. And you know, previous years he hasn't really got on the part that much, but I think now, um, and especially with Fremantle's run at the start, is going to be a quite easy start for them. And guys like King should be able to get 70s to 80s at will. And, you know, these bench trials are more just to make money than actually get points. And I think a guy like Liam Henry has a whole lot easier job of doing that than a guy like Sheasel, who's going to be in a team that's going to lose a lot of games and guys like Philippou, um mclean could outscore but he just looks so below par and it's hard to pick him um and there's quite a few other guys as well um that kind of perform below where we want and i think that having him on the bench at least is going to give coverage if we need it in case of fogarty and stuff aren't playing so well um but i think we should be all right and for the last player, I did have Fergus Green there, but I don't like key forwards. None of us like key forwards uh, oh, well, for super coach purposes. So I'm not going to pick Fergus Green. I'm going to pick Flanders. And that is going to be based on him playing. If he doesn't play, he's out. Um, but at this point in time, I think Flanders is going to have a higher scoring potential. You know, we only have to get 150K out of these players. That's where you would normally trade a rookie. And that's what we're going to do here. Um, if he gets to 400K, which based on the magic number the year, this year, especially at the start of the season, is only going to be an average of 72. And 72 is quite achievable for Sam Flanders, especially based on his VFL numbers. And... For a guy like Henry, who only has to make 150k, which should put him to 350, you know, he's got to average even less, uh, 63. And I think a 63 is something that Henry could do pretty easily. I think he can do 70, 70 to 80. And, you know, he does 70 to 80, that's like a 200k rise. And we don't need to trade these players out straight away. That's the thing. Um, but... All of these positions are going to be changeable. Um, so 
we don't really have to worry about that so much. We've got 36 trades. That's a lot of trades. And I'm hoping there's going to be some guys that are going to be scoring well enough that we can keep them. And as you'll see in the midfield, I think a lot of those guys are going to kind of come from the midfield. And we might not need to use 22 trades to upgrade to a, a full primo team. It might be that a Draper actually becomes... Uh, a keeper option uh it's not out of the realms um and i think that could be a possibility but he's got to do a lot to be able to be able to do that um uh, nathan wilson uh has now come into the back line you see that has changed from the last video um it was crozier i've gone with the wilson off the back of that easy free man run at the start and the fact that uh he's also um, getting up the majority of the kick-ins, which I'm not sure Crozy will get. Now, this could change to, uh, to Liam Jones, but for now, we'll keep it at Wilson and we'll, we'll hopefully off the back of this be able to get a nice enough scoring defence uh, with him as a bit of cover. I think Jimby might be on for one of these players, but I'm not sure which. I would probably say like a weedering, but we'll see what happens. So anyway, that's the forward setup. Uh, the only thing that may actually change is the Ruck, Rattle Galeer. Uh, I think Samson Ryan has been picked. Uh, has he been picked? No, he's not. He's an emergency. So uh, actually, Rattle Galeer will probably stay as long as he gets picked. If not, we might just downgrade that to like a Samson Ryan who might get a game at some point in the future. I think we might still do that because I think uh, well, Brady Galea plays, so we're probably going to have to pick him. But that's that's still to be decided because I think he's going to be quite a slow burn. But at the same time, we might not need to change him for a while. So we'll leave it at that for now. But anyway, as I say, at the, all of, at the end of all of my videos, if you've enjoyed this, if you want to follow along, give us a subscribe, give us a like, and... Um, Leave us a comment. Who do you think should be in the forward line? Should we change it up? Is there someone that's been missed? Do we do? Should we have that 120k rookie in there, or should we bring in Toby McLean? Uh, he could go on the midfield. That's an option. But now, this is the setup we're going to go with, and we'll see what happens. Thanks.